Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this interesting text-based effect. Now what is happening here is that each letter blends into the next one in the series and it creates this very interesting swoosh pattern. So there are a lot of interesting tricks to involved in doing this, which I think you're going to find interesting. So let's make a start. So let's look at our project setup. I've gone for 1080 by 1350, which is sort of social media four by five. I'm going for a frame rate of 24 and a duration of 12 seconds. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come down and grab the Bezier tool and I'm just going to draw out the sort of shape that I want for my text to follow. And let's turn off the fill just so we can see the outline. And I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking on that shape just to get it the way I want. So here's my tweaked shape. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and select the text tool and I'm going to type the word curvature. So in terms of this particular font, I'm going to go with a size of 150 and the tracking I'm going to set to negative 100 so that all the letters are basically sitting on top of each other as you can now see. And then I'm also going to adjust the baseline to negative 75. And I'm also just going to center it up just because I like things to be centered. So then what we're going to do with this is we're going to come to behaviors and text animation and sequence text. So the parameter that we're going to affect is add format opacity. And let's set that value to zero. The sequencing is going to be through inverted. Actually, I'm just going to undo that tracking so you can see what I'm doing. Let's just set that back to normal for the time being. So that sort of tracking through the letters like this. Let's come back to this behavior and just refine it a little bit. I want a spread of 0.5 because I don't want them to be overlapping too much. And then I want to come down to the speed and set that to custom. And you can see what that does is it sets a keyframe at zero or the first frame of the sequence, I should say, which in my case is one and a keyframe at the last frame, which in this case is 288. So I may need to make a little bit of an adjustment to this custom speed curve. So you'll notice that the letter C fades in and we don't actually want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to frame 14 and I'm going to set a keyframe for that. And I'm going to set that custom speed to be 10 and also set it to be 10 at the start. So now the C doesn't fade in and you'll notice that the E fades out at the end. So what we need to do in that case is to come to frame 265 and let's set a keyframe there and let's set that value to be 95. And let's come to the end and also set that to be 95. And now you'll see that the E doesn't fade out and that's pretty good. So we can come back to the text and we can reset that tracking to negative 100. So they're all sitting on top of each other. And you can see now we've got this effect of the, the letters just mixing in between each other. And so what we can do here is drag this text out into a new group. So drag it out of that group. And from this group, we're going to make a clone. So right click make clone layer and we can turn off the group that we've just made that from and then we're going to turn that clone into a replicator so object replicate so the first thing we're going to do is change the shape to geometry and this is where the bezier shape that we made is going to come in so we're going to drag that into the source there and you can see already how they are being distributed along the path I'm going to set the number of points to be 288 for the time being, because that's the number of frames in our sequence. We will need to come down here and turn off play frames. And then we need to increase that source frame offset. Let me just open that out so you can see the source frame offset value there. We're going to set to one. Now you probably can't see, but actually now what we've got is this blend going all the way from the C right through our curve, ending up on the E. We can't really see exactly what's going on at the moment. We need to do a couple of things here. We need to open up the gradient and I'm going to select that tab there and set that to 10%. Uh, it should be a little bit more obvious now how that's working. I can turn off my 
Bezier shape. So you'll notice at the moment it's all a little bit steppy and when it comes to it we're going to increase the number of points to something like 480 and you can see that's creating this much smoother effect. And let's also turn on additive blend and you can see that helps as well, makes those internal lines a bit more obvious. So I'm just going to reduce that back down to 288 just to, to keep things moving at this point. So I'm going to come back down to my source text here and appearance and I'm going to turn off the face and turn on the outline and that gives us a slightly nicer effect I think. So the face it's a little bit too filled in. I like the fact that it's a little bit more sort of schematic when we turn on the outline. So we can make this whatever colour we want. I think I'm going to go for something like that, a little bit less saturation. So the next thing we need to do is to animate the replicator. And to do that, we're going to come to Behaviors, Replicator, Sequence Replicator. We're going to choose Opacity for the parameter. We're going to set that to zero. Let's have a spread of something like 30. We want to set the sequencing as From. And the Traversal, we want to set to Custom and then we can animate this location. So I'm going to come to the first frame. I'm going to set a keyframe for the location. Then I'm going to come forward to frame 188 and I'm going to set that location up to 100%. So now that grows on like this with a nice, with a nice soft edge at the front there and that's down to that spread value and it ends at frame 188. So moving forward, please ignore the fact that this is missing the sequence replicator and has got ramp behaviors on it instead. Ignore those, this is the right way to do it. I experimented with a different way and it was a disaster. So sequence replicator, animate the location. The next thing we need to do, or the final thing we need to do, is to add in the characters over the top. So let us select this group here with the sequence text in it right click and duplicate and let's drag it out to the top. I'm going to delete that sequence text to turn this group back on again. Obviously in this case we want the tracking to be normal or rather we actually want it to be quite extreme. So I'm going to go for 250 for the time being and you can see how that's looking. So what we need to do here is we need to come over to the layout tab. Under the layout method we need to select path and that gives us these path options here. For the path shape, I'm going to select geometry. And then as before, we're going to use that Bezier shape as the source. Now, the one thing we don't want to do is to have it aligned to path because we don't want them all crazy like that. So that's already starting to look a bit better. We also need to come in to the behavior controls here. And for the anchor position, we need to select center. So we're still not correctly lined up. Let's come to the end just so we can see it in full context. Let's come, up, come back over to Format. And we don't actually now want a baseline offset. So let's set that to zero. And the other thing we need to do is to sort out our tracking. And the number I'm going to go for here is 221. Just to bear in mind that the actual tracking figure is going to depend a great deal on the nature of your shape and also the font that you're using. But this is the correct number for this font with this particular curve. So why is it not fitting exactly? Well, to get it to fit exactly, we need to kind of revisit our original swoosh graphic. And we're going to take that clone layer that we made to create the replicator. Not, not the particle cell, but the actual clone layer there. I'm going to turn it on so we can see it. There it is in the middle. Currently it's on E. And let's zoom right into it. And then we're going to select the anchor point tool and we're going to turn on the overlays, show overlays. And what we need to do here is line up the anchor point with the center of the letter just here. Let's have a look at the result of that come out of the anchor point tool zoom out and you can see everything is now actually fitting really rather well. So I'm going to turn off that clone and you can see that we're pretty much completely lined up. So what we need to do is now finally to animate the appearance of this text over the top. What I'm going to do is come over to appearance and I think I'm going to turn on face 
and turn off outline, I think. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to behaviors and text animation and sequence text. And yet again, we're going to come to format and opacity. And I also want to add face blur. So let's set the opacity to zero and that blur amount let's set to three. Just going to sort of soften them as they appear. You can see how that's already starting to work. Let's set the spread to two and for the end offset we'll have 50. Uh, now you can see they're pretty much fading on in sync with the rest of the animation. Now, to come back to the point I made earlier, when you come to render this, you'll want to increase the number of points. Now, there's a thing to bear in mind here. When you double the number of points, you need to halve the frame offset. So if we double the number of points here to 576, what we'll need to do is to halve that frame offset, and it's going to be 0.5, and that will spread it out smoothly across the replicator. If we wanted to go crazy and have four times the number of points, so that's 1152, we'd need to reduce that frame offset even more, so quarter of a frame, so 0.25, and that again spreads it nicely over the entire replicator. So that's just a point to bear in mind. So that really is it. I hope this has been an interesting project. Quite a few important little technical details to bear in mind when you're building something like this. So I hope it's been useful from that point of view as well. So thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.